The Behind the Book Lecture Series is made possible by World eBook Library, the world's largest database of portable eBooks for academic research, and the World Heritage Encyclopedia, the world's knowledge at your fingertips. Das Kapital, or Capital, Critique of Political Economy, it was written by Karl Marx in 1867, and it is the masterwork of communist ideology, political theory, and economic critique. Karl Marx uh, was born in Germany to a very well-off middle-class family. He actually started his writing career as a journalist and as a novelist and a poet at a time when the Industrial Revolution was off and running. Uh, it was a time in Europe where uh, the capitalization of the economy and the creation of factories and factory labor had really taken over the production of wealth. It was the new source of wage earning. People saw a great creation of wealth, but they saw tremendous social displacement as well. The currency of wealth was no longer land or farm labor. The new currency of wealth was raw goods and manufacturing and factory labor. What did it mean for the populations that were moving from countryside to city to work in factories? What did it mean by farmers that were displaced? Sustainability was in question for the first time. And this was the environment in which Karl Marx began to think, began to write, and began to publish. He was trying to be ahead of the curve. He was trying to interpret what he saw in society around him and to do it with a robust philosophical lens. Marx is most associated with proletarian rights, the political empowerment of the laboring class. He was not radicalized by being a worker or by being exposed to factories. It is said that Marx never once visited a factory. He was radicalized by attending very prestigious universities where he was exposed to the ideas of, of some popular philosophers of his day, a group of people who were called the Young Hegelians, or people who were fond of Hegel's philosophy of dialecticalism, this idea that history progressed in the world through clashes between one great social force and another, and through those clashes you would get syntheses that drove history onward. Marx's contribution to dialectical thought was to invent this idea of dialectical materialism. He said that the forces that shaped human history more than any other were forces associated with material things, with economy. Karl Marx's most famous work is probably the short treatise that he titled Communist Manifesto, but his most complete statement of thinking is contained in his work Capital, or Das Kapital, it is often referred to in the German. It was designed to be a three-volume set, and Marx only completed the first volume. His good friend Friedrich Engels completed volumes two and three after Marx died. Marx was really trying to get his head around the whole thing, all of world history in his economic theory. It was Das Kapital that became the most influential work uh, because it provided underpinnings for future communist thinkers to expand on Marx's original thinking. Kapital argues for a materialistic dialectic, the idea that all world history can be understood in terms of materialism, material things. It's our material universe that determines who we are. It had to do with the way we organize to produce things, to produce food, to produce items, to produce wealth. That determined your life. That determined world history, according to Marx. Individuals don't really matter. What matters is irresistible 
impersonal social forces. We're all just carried along by these waves. The most important economic social phenomenon of Marx's day was of course capitalism. The amassing of great amounts of cash was empowering people to launch huge economic enterprises in manufacturing and exporting and importing, and it was changing the way that humans did economy. Uh, and Marx had this notion that capitalism, in a famous phrase, carried the seeds of its own destruction that there was something inherent in the capitalistic organization of society that was bound to fall apart. Capitalism relied on owners of the means of production exploiting the providers of labor. And inevitably, irresistibly, for sure, in the march of history, it was the underclass, it was the labor class that would triumph in this battle. It was like a natural law. Capitalism had inherent flaws. It would create an economy of crisis and repeated crises. He said that the owners of the means of production, the capitalists, would arbitrarily assign value to the goods that, that were being produced. The price was divorced from the value of the labor that went into it. You would charge as much as you could get if you were a capitalist. You wouldn't charge the real value of that product. The cost of the raw materials plus the cost of the labor, you're gonna put a profit on top of it. And profit was evil in Marx's mind. Profit caused a great deal of trouble because it was a fiction. It was arbitrary. And from time to time, this inefficient exploitive system would cause great crises as people realized, well, we overpaid for this and that. And so you would see recessions or great depressions. From time to time, capitalism would need tremendous and violent correction. And these crises, in Marx's mind, were opportunities for the revolution, opportunities for the underclass to take over. People still think a lot about Marx's critique of capitalist recession today. And one of the reasons that Marx became so infamous that he was kicked out of more than one country is because his theory of economic displacement, his call for proletarian revolution, immediately found a sympathetic audience. The fact was that 19th century industrialism was immorally exploitive, that the owners of the means of production were paying incredibly low wages to people who were trapped. People, perhaps, are not free market items, the laborer is not a, a product. The laborer is a human with a life and a family and human needs. Uh, the system was brutal. People were dying in the factories and there was no control. Nobody knew what to do. There were no labor unions in those days. And Marx was the first one to really speak into that passionately and holistically. He had a plan, or at least he had a theory. Here's what you should do, exploited workers. Be violent yourself. You become the dictators in a new world. You meet fire with fire, violence with violence. That's the only way that you're gonna get ahead. That struck a chord with people who were looking upon the suffering of the early industrial laborers and wondering what in the world could be done. Karl Marx died a stateless man. He was kicked out of Germany. He wasn't allowed uh, in many countries in, in Europe. The only place he could live, ironically enough, was London, was in Britain. It was the center of the Industrial Revolution and the only country generous enough to host Karl Marx. Indications are that he was a little bit bitter about this. He lived almost his whole adult life in London, where he did most of his work. Published the manifesto, wrote Capital, but he lived in poverty. He lived in near squalor. Uh, his family suffered probably uh, more than one of his children died because of their tough economic conditions. He was a man who lived in irony, who lived a certain amount of deprivation. Uh, there's a, an apocryphal story. He couldn't afford shoes, so when he went to the library each day to write Capital, he'd had to go in his slippers, and people would despise him. This was Karl Marx's life experience. 
He was not an exploited factory worker, but he felt displaced. And one can't help but believe that that played a role in the development of his revolutionary ideas. At one point in world history, a billion and a half people were living under communist governments that owed their existence to the philosophical underpinnings of Karl Marx. And then, beginning in the 1990s, communist systems around the world just fell apart. Um, the prediction was that capitalism carried the seeds of its own destruction, but it appeared that communist dictatorships carried the seeds of their own destruction. And I think if Karl Marx walked into today's world, he would be aghast because the nations, the peoples that took him most seriously, actually have suffered the most. It seems that he was very wrong. However, there are still people in today's world that ascribe at least to parts of his communist theory. People are still trying to figure it out. People are still trying to manage the social displacements caused by the powerful capitalist economy. Really, how do we build a just society in which everybody gets taken care of and everybody is safe and well off? Maybe there's not a governmental answer. Maybe there's only an individual answer. Maybe that's a spiritual question and not an economic one. But Karl Marx would have something to say about it if he showed up.